So far we've uh, compared the various triggers of the Rigol and the Siglent. All of these except the video trigger, the ones that are checked over here. The ones that we have left are the duration and pattern trigger, which uh, I'm going to do next, and then the bus of uh, trigger and decodes. So I'm hoping to finish up uh, with two more videos. This has run longer than I had expected. The first one is going to be about the duration and pattern trigger in the two scopes, and the second, the bus decode and trigger functions for these three types of buses. So here is a summary of the similar pattern and duration triggers in the Rigol. In both cases, they are the AND of either a high level, a low level, a don't care, in this case a rising or falling, whereas in the duration trigger that's the AND of a high or a low or a don't care, and a time, that is a duration. So they're essentially the same, uh, or a way to say it is, the duration trigger is exactly the same as the pattern trigger, but with the addition of time and the deletion of rising and falling edges. If you compare that to the pattern trigger in the siglent, it's the AND or NOT AND or NAND, NOT OR or NOR, of high, low, don't care, and time. So in other words, it is the same as the Rigol pattern trigger, only you have additional options of ORing, NANDing, and NORing these signals together. So I'm going to primarily compare the pattern trigger of the siglent to the duration trigger of the Rigol. So this is a sketch that I've prepared to try to illustrate how you could use a pattern trigger that has timing. In other words, either the duration trigger of the Rigol or the pattern trigger of the siglent to uh, trigger on set up or hold violations. And what I have shown here is the data line and the setup time is the time before that the data line must be high before the clock goes high. This is the clock line. The hold, of course, is the time that the data must remain stable after the clock transition. So down here I have repeated the D signal, that is a data signal, uh, just an arbitrary wave shape. Here is the D inverted, which is simply the, uh, if you have this on, say, channel 1 of the oscilloscope, and you invert channel 1, this is the signal that you'll see. And then down here is the clock signal, and for example, if this is on channel 2 of the oscilloscope, then this is the D signal anded with the C signal, which you can and in either of the scopes. If you then measure the duration of this pulse, I think you will see uh, lining up. In what you are actually doing is you are measuring the whole time of the signal. In other words, the time that the, the data signal remains after the clock has transitioned. I've set up the signalant to uh, work with the uh, pattern trigger and I have a uh, have it set to look for an AND that lasts less than 2.37 microseconds. So the scope is now set up and over here on the generator I have the uh, the phase between two square waves well I'm sorry between a square wave and a pulse and right now it's set at 33 degrees and I'm going to raise that to 34 but I want to watch the screen as we do because 
what we're looking for is a hold time that is less than 2.37 seconds. So when I go to 34, you'll notice the scope triggers. And what is actually going on is that is the first time that the overlap between this signal and this signal, let's assume this is the data signal and this is the clock, the overlap is, is less than 2.37 microseconds. So now let's go over and do the same thing on the Rigol. I've set up the Rigol to do uh, duration, uh, as I pointed out in the introduction to this uh, to this video. The duration trigger of the Rigol is very very similar to the pattern trigger of the Siglet. And what I'm going to do now is I have it set up, and I'm going to try to get. Well, I don't think it's going to. Be able to you'll be able to see me change this but I'm going to change the phase of the uh, pulse relative to the uh, square wave I'm using the square wave as the clock and the pulse as a simulated data and as I do you'll see that the Rigol triggers as well now the way the Rigol is set up is the type is duration you set the source and in this case you may notice I have channel 1 apparently you can pick any one of those channels doesn't matter because you get a uh, little window down here that shows the uh, basically the pattern with channel 1 on the left channel 4 on the right now if you use the MSO feature, which I'm not doing in this video, then you get the full 15 or 16 channels of the MSO. But uh, channel 1 is set to high, channel 2 is set to high. That you do with the code button. Then you set when, and in this case I have when less than, and then you set the time, and I have it set to the same value I had on the Siglet, 2.37 uh, microseconds. So let's uh, lower the generator, restart the oscilloscope, and once again we're looking for a hold violation that is less than 2.37 microseconds. And as soon as I turn it to that, uh, the Rigol triggers. So these two scopes perform almost identically.